What's up guys, welcome back to John's Kitchen. My name is Kamal. And I'm Erica. On this channel, we specialize in making beautiful food from around the world and showing you guys the easiest way to make it at home. We upload new videos every week. If this sounds good, remember to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. So today we're trying something a little bit different. We have teamed up with El Cisco TV from the States. El Cisco is a trained chef now living in Miami. He has a beautiful channel over here on YouTube. You will find the link down in the description box. We challenged El Cisco to make cupcake gemmas, unicorn cake. If you don't know what this cake is, it's proper famous. Okay, Gemma is an amazing pastry chef. She has a pastry shop uh, in London, in Soho. She does some proper amazing things. So we challenged us Cisco making this cake and he challenged us back making the same cake. It was real fun. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to see our amazing result. You'll find a Cisco's link down in the description box. Make sure to watch our video and then go check his video. Honestly, you're gonna be cracking up. First off, we're making the Victoria sponge because it's the base of the cake and is the longest thing to make. We need to make sure also that it's gonna be set and firm in order to build the cake properly. First thing you wanna do is grab yourself a bowl and you wanna add your butter. It's ideal if you take your butter out of the fridge first so it becomes up to room temperature so it's easier to work. Place it into the bowl and you wanna whip the butter until it almost doubles in size and becomes pale. After you've added the butter, you wanna add the sugar and then you wanna keep working it until all the sugar has dissolved. For our recipe, we're using some vegan spread or vegan butter made with coconut. And honestly, it worked pretty well for us, you know. Generally speaking, whenever we do our cake recipes, we'll always do vegan butter because we have some allergies in the family. Vegan butter nowadays is actually pretty good and when you're actually using it for baking or cooking, it actually acts in a very similar way to dairy butter. Then you want to add your flour, give it a good mix again. Keep mixing and mixing and mixing it well until all the ingredients have emulsified and combined well. Next step is to add your eggs. Actually, you should add eggs before you add the sugar. We misread the recipe, so we added it after. And honestly, I don't think it made too much of a difference. But, you know, cupcake Gemma, don't sue me. You know, we tried. We tried our best, believe me. <laughs> Once all your ingredients are emulsified well, next step is to add your milk. We added half the original amount that's on the recipe and honestly it worked well. So the last thing you want to do is add in your sprinkles. Mix quickly so the color doesn't run. Once you've added your sprinkles, next is to get yourself your baking tin. To line it with some baking paper just so it's easier to remove once it's actually finished baking. Try and split your mix evenly into the three containers. If you want to be more precise, then use a scale. That's probably the best way to do it. This original unicorn cake was four layers, but we made it three layers. Why? Because we had three tins. You want to bake your sponge at 170 degrees Celsius in preheated oven. The original recipe says to bake the sponge for 25 minutes, though we had to leave them inside the oven for 40 minutes. I guess because our sponge were pretty high, so I had to cook through properly. So once the timer is up and your cake base is fully cooked, you want to remove it from the oven, place it onto a wire rack if you have. Then you want to use a wooden skewer or spoon or whatever you have into the middle of the cake and then make sure if it comes out clean, that means that your cake is cooked. If it's wet when you pull it out, that means you need to bake it for a little bit longer. You want to leave it to sit on the wire rack for at least an hour, I would say, don't touch it. Then you want to place it into the fridge overnight to set. Next step, we want to make our meringue. Circus meringues. Or unicorn poops, that's how uh, Gemma refers to it. No! Grab yourself a bowl and wipe it down with some vinegar in case it's, you know, there is any grease or anything because otherwise your eggs white will not whip. Put inside your eggs white and start mixing. You will see that firstly you will have a very big bubbles and then slowly the bubbles will become smaller and smaller and the mix will become firmer of course. So obviously the classic way of making sure that your meringue is ready is by holding the bowl upside down. If you want, if you're brave enough, put it over your head. Just make sure you whip it, you know, enough. Otherwise you'll have a big mess everywhere. But otherwise just uh, do it on the surface. It's probably the safest way to do it.
on Gemma's original recipe, she says that you can use like cream food coloring. We honestly, we couldn't find any of that around. So we use the regular food coloring, the liquid one. Sometimes you just adapt the recipe a little bit and use whatever ingredients you have available. Depending on how many colors you have, I would recommend this, you know, placing a few drops at the corner of the bowl. Then you want to use a spatula just to gently fold it all together. You don't want to mix it too much. For the next part of the recipe, you're gonna need some marshmallows. If you can find some mini marshmallows, then grab those, and then you wanna place it onto your tray. If you can't find any small ones, exactly like us, then grab some scissors and just cut the big ones into smaller pieces. Use your spoon to put the leftover meringue on the baking tray, and then put your baking paper on top so it doesn't move inside the oven. take your meringue mix you want to hold it over and then you want to squeeze and then lift and that way you'll get a nice poop shape <laughs> nice poop. put some sprinkles on top of the meringue before baking them okay 100 degrees celsius in a preheated oven we left them for 45 minutes and then instead of removing them from the oven we kept them inside the oven with the oven open to let them cool down so for the next part of the recipe, you're gonna make your buttercream icing. So for this next part of the recipe, you're gonna need literally half a kilo, that's 500 grams of powdered sugar, on top of the rest of the sugar that we've already used for this recipe, which is like another 500 grams. So in total, one kilo of sugar for one cake recipe, yes. So for the buttercream icing, you want to use some soft butter again. You whip it until very, very pale. Add slowly your icing sugar until it's fully combined. If you like, you can add some flavoring. We just kept it very simple without adding anything. Once your butter icing has been made, you want to split the mix into three separate bowls. Then you want to use the colors that you have. So for us, it was blue, green, red. Then you want to add one to two drops of the coloring into each bowl and then give it a good mix until you're happy with the color. But be careful if you're using the liquid food coloring. If you add too much, it will make your mix wet and then you will not be able to use it anymore. cake from the fridge as they're finally hard enough to work with. So remove the baking paper and then you want to level them out with a serrated knife or bread knife. icing on your plate so the base will not move. Put the sponge on the top. So you just want to make sure you add enough icing and enough strawberry jam so when you put the next layer on top it's nice and sturdy. Once you put the next layer on top just press it down lightly so it will just sit. Nicely. So then you want to keep repeating the same process until you have all of your layers assembled. your cakes assembled in a nice tower you want to start adding your buttercream icing which you've obviously colored earlier on try and add it as evenly as you can so the colors don't mix too much so add a good amount and then you want to work your way around the cake until you've added enough to actually cover the outside of the cake to make our challenge even more challenging our son woke up a thousand times Surprise! okay so once all your colors are in place you want to use the spatula Put some baking paper on the side so you can clean your spatula each time that you smooth out the cake. Don't go too lightly, don't go too hard. I cannot really give you any suggestion here. Just, you know, follow your heart and do something. Exactly. Try to keep a steady hand. By this time, if you see on the original cake, Gemma's one, she used uh, some kind of, uh, was it chocolate? White chocolate. White chocolate drippings. But honestly, I mean, at 3 a.m. in the morning with one hand with the baby and, uh, and a 35 degree kitchen, we skip that part. You know, forgive us. But... Add your meringue, place them on the top of your cake. It'll be very pretty. Our meringue were pretty puffy and the cake was like, you know, smaller than Gemma's one. So it's very compact. Yes. But compact, but beautiful. 
So of that's course. what you have to remember. The end result was definitely worth all the hard work that we put in and all the hours. But you be the judges of that. So if you like our cake, leave us a comment down below and let us know if you enjoyed this video and if you're happy with our end result. Honestly, we're pretty happy. In terms of flavor, our one is very close to the original one. In terms of decoration, slightly different, but not too far Perky. away from that, you know. It was, uh, you know, rustic, let's just put it like that. So if you look now on the little screen, maybe we're gonna put it somewhere around here. This is how the cake actually should look. So obviously Gemma is highly skilled. The icing, the buttercream icing that she put on the side of the cake, honestly, it was amazing. It, like there was no colors that mixed or blended together. It was honestly, it's a beautiful cake. Now you're gonna see the hard oh, work that we put in and you're gonna see our beautiful cake. <laughs> there, there, there's our cake. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's dreamy. <laughs> I think our cake was a complete winner. You know, now we're actually going to cut into the cake. You can see the different layers. That's nice. That's nice, actually. Yeah, this the in nice. inside of the cake was nice. Honestly, the outside was a bit, you know, a bit Quirky. suspect. You know, <laughs> but, honestly, <laughs> it's not bad. We, we tried in a way. Make sure you check out El Cisco's video to see how his cake was and see if he fared a bit better than us. You know, I think. I hope for him. I hope, I hope he does, you know. <laughs>Thank you all for sticking around to the end we hope you enjoyed this video remember we put a lot of hard work into this if you would like to see more videos like this of us having more challenges with other youtubers then let us know in the comments down below we actually really enjoyed this one we had a lot of fun thank you cisco for challenging us guys thank you so much remember that we drop new videos every week hit the subscribe button the notification and i'll see you here very soon don't forget to check out us channel and that's it guys peace Bye.